Module 5, Lesson 12, Reason Using Benchmarks to Compare Two Fractions on a Number Line. Reason about the size of a fraction compared to one-half. One-half is our benchmark fraction. So the fraction that we're looking at, and we'll look at first, is two-sixths. Well, we know both of these fractions are between the whole number 0 and 1. And for 1 half, that would be half the distance in between 0 and 1. Is 2 6 more or less than 1 half? Well, it helps us to think about the number of 6 in a whole. How many 6 equal a whole? 1 does equal 6 6. 0 would be 0 6. And 1 half would be equal to how many 6? Right, 3 6. We could multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. So if this is 0 6, this is 3 6, that means there would actually be 2 6 in between. 1 6 there, and another 6 there. Just as there would be 3 6. 4, 6, and then 5, 6. So 2, 6 would be placed right here onto our number line. So we partition that line to show 6. There are 6 parts in between 0 and 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6, 6. There's 6 parts in between 0 and 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's look at 5 eighths. Again, it's 0 and 1. Halfway in between is a half. When we're looking at 5 eighths, we would divide that number line into 8 parts. If I go like this here, that would actually be into 4 parts. So this is 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1. For 5 eighths, we'll have to divide our number line in between 0 and 1 into 8 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And to place 5 eighths there, 5 eighths would be more than 1 half. Thinking about this with fractions, our equivalent for eighths for 1 half is Multiply by 4 in the numerator and in the denominator to get 4 eighths. So to count by eighths, we have 0, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, which does equal 3 fourths, 7 eighths, and 1. So I placed 5 eighths onto our number line, and we know it is bigger than 1 half. Half of 8 is 4. I have a question for you. Is two-thirds more or less than one-half? Well, here's zero. Here's one. We'll mark one-half. If we were to break this apart into thirds, well, let's see. That about looks like one-third here and two-thirds here. So we have zero, one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, which also equals one. Now, it looks like, according to our picture and diagram, then, that two-thirds would be more than one-half. Thinking about that, if we took two and divided it by three, well, we can't quite do that. But we can write two-thirds as six and also 1 half as 6. So we have 4 6 compared with 3 6, and we know that 4 6 or 2 thirds is larger. So now we know that we could look at this as 6, and so in between 0 and 1, we would divide it into six parts. So we have zero, one six, two six, which is also to equal to one third, three six, four six, 
five six and six six. I have zero six there to be able to compare those fractions. Here we're asked which is larger, one half or three fifths. It is your turn. Take a moment to go ahead and use that number line. I'm going to give you a hint, and I'm going to let you know that we'll want tenths. So rewrite one half in tenths, rewrite three fifths into tenths, and then place them onto the number line to be able to show which one is larger. Pause the video while you do your work. Did you multiply by 5 in the numerator and in the denominator to be able to get 1 half equaling 5 tenths? For 3 fifths, did you multiply by 2 in the denominator and 2 in the numerator to be able to get 6 tenths? So, like I said, we needed tenths, so in between 0 and 1, we'll divide it into 10 parts. There's a half to begin with, which was equal to 5 tenths. And then so now in between 0 and 5 tenths, I'll have um, 5 parts, so I'll draw 4 lines. And the same thing here as well, so that I end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parts. <clears throat> says 6 tenths here, so I'll write in 6 tenths, and I'll go ahead and place my point right there as well. So I had 10 tenths, I had 0 tenths, and in between, I still had 5 tenths and 6 tenths. 6 tenths was equal to 3 fifths. 3 fifths is further to the right on the number line. So, which is larger? 3 fifths is larger than one half. Read that. So we got that common denominator of 10 so that we looked at that right on the number line. Here we're asked to compare these and what we'll do is we'll think about one half, we'll think about zero, we'll think about one, and where it is that these would appear. If we notice that we can easily convert or change and write an equivalent fraction, then we will. So let's see, 50, we would multiply by 2 to be able to get 100. 27 doubled is 54, 50 doubled is 100. Well, I know that 42 hundredths is less than a half, 54 hundredths is more than a half, Therefore, 42 is less than hundredths is less than 54 hundredths. I also could have thought that, hey, 27 fiftieths is already bigger than one half, because 25 fiftieths does equal one half. Here's two thirds and here's five tenths. Hey, I recognize five tenths actually equals one half. We divide the numerator and denominator both by five. So if that's the case, is two-thirds bigger or one-half bigger? Well, earlier I had stated already that two-thirds was bigger than one-half. Two-thirds was equal to four-sixths, and one-half is equal to three-sixths. Let's look at this last one. Eleven-twelfths or two-fifths? Which of those is smaller than a half? Right, two-fifths is smaller than a half, and we know eleven-twelfths is bigger than a half. We know that one-half times six and times six is equal to six-twelfths. So in this case, since two-fifths is already less than six-twelfths and eleven-twelfths is bigger, then we know eleven-twelfths is way, way larger. We actually could draw out a number line. In some cases, that helps us because we know where zero and one is. We know 11 twelfths is about there, and 2 fifths would be a little bit less than 1 half here. So we know that 11 twelfths is bigger than 2 fifths.
So by knowing about our benchmark fractions with one half and our whole number zero and one, we can use these to help compare 